A Nicaraguan found obstructing a roadway in a vehicle with North Carolina license plates. Firefighters stopped the spread of a blaze after a lightning strike at a courtyard villa. A notorious hoarder who threatened his mother is back behind bars. Residents frustrated after grandkids move into home in the villages. A sinkhole shuts down traffic on a busy thoroughfare in the villages. And the villager explains the reason why his grandchildren were living in his home. A villager is headed to prison after stealing a golf cart from a church parking lot. A villager who shoved his wife out of a golf cart is ordered by the judge to give up his booze. No holes in ones of golf this week. Letters to the editor. This and more. Coming up. I'm going to do some updates and try to get them out of the way real quick. So I'm not going to read everything, but you'll know who they are. A notorious hoarder who has been accused of threatening his mother's life is back behind bars. Jeffrey Charles Packard, 36, was arrested Sunday by Marion County Sheriff's deputies at a home in Bellevue. He was wanted on multiple Sumter County warrants. He will be extradited from Marion County to Sumter County. Packard had been free on bond following his arrest on March 11th at the home. He shared with his mother on Blythe Wood Loop in the village of Sunset Point. Packard skipped a mandatory court date and was a wanted man at the time of his most recent arrest. Well, there's his update. There's another update. This is the guy that shoved his wife out of a moving golf cart. (laughs) A villager who was apparently intoxicated when he shoved his wife out of a golf cart has been ordered to give up booze. That always works. Jerry Dallaire, 68 of the village of Lake Denham, is poised to escape prosecution on the charge of aggravated battery of a person over the age of 65 as the result of a pretrial intervention contract entered into this month in Sumter County Court. As part of the contract, the Manchester, New Hampshire native must complete a batterer's intervention program, seek a drug and alcohol evaluation, refrain from consumption of alcohol and controlled substances, and submit to random screenings. Those is what'll get you. They got a right to come knocking on your door anytime, 24-7, seven seven days a week, and say, pee in this, and you have to do it. If he successfully completes the terms of the contract, the charge will be dismissed. A habitual offender from Honduras was arrested after a police officer noticed an expired decal on a trailer he was towing. We're going to call him Ed. Ed, 40, of Orlando, was driving a green Toyota pickup truck towing a black cargo trailer at about 11.30 a.m. Monday on U.S. 301 and State Road 44. That's Wildwood. When an officer noticed the trailer's revalidation decal had expired in April, according to the arrest report. The Toyota's license plate had also expired in April. During a traffic stop, Ed presented the officer with a Honduran identification card. When asked for a Florida driver's license, Ed said he had obtained a Florida license a long time ago, but admitted it had been suspended. The officer confirmed that Ed's Florida license had been suspended in 2007 due to a driving under the influence arrest in Hillsborough County. He was arrested on a felony charge of driving while license suspended and, and ticketed for the expired tax. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $2,500 bond. Firefighters from the village's public safety department stopped a spread of a blaze to other units after a lightning strike at a courtyard villa. Units from the fire department were called at 11.47 p.m. Monday at the home at 1336 La Jolla Circle in the Rio Grande Villas near Rio Grande Family Pool. Upon arrival, there was heavy smoke and fire showing from the roof, with two neighboring structures in serious danger due to the fire being located in a villa area. The fire was extinguished and members of the community emergency response team responded to the scene and provided rehab for the firefighters. Numerous units arrived at the scene with a total response time of 6 minutes and 5 seconds. Firefighters cleared the scene at 1.41 a.m. Tuesday. There were no civilian or firefighters injured. That's good. It is the second major fire ignited by lightning within a week in the villages. The other fire was in the village of Charlotte, and I'll be reporting that here in just a second. A native of Mexico who has been in the United States for six years was arrested when he was caught driving without a license. 
Esteban, 35 of Somerville, was driving a black 2006 Ford pickup shortly before 2 p.m. Sunday in the area of U.S. 301 and County Road 466 when the police officers ran a license plate and found it had not been assigned to any vehicle. During a traffic stop, Esteban handed the officer his Mexican passport and admitted he does not have a driver's license. He said he has been in the country for six years. I think they should have to prove that. He was arrested on a charge of operating a motor vehicle without a license. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $150 bond. Here's the second lightning strike. No one was injured when a lightning strike punched a hole in the roof of a home in the Villages. The Villages Public Safety Department at 12.30 a.m. Saturday dispatched multiple crews to the home of 3475 Rabbit Run Path in the Village of Charlotte. Upon arrival, firefighters observed heavy smoke coming from their home's roof, and within seconds of arriving, they found heavy fire coming from the roof in the front right corner of the house. Crews made entry into the home and conduct a primary search and extinguished the fire. The homeowner reported the home was struck by lightning. The village's public safety department determined the homeowner's observations were consistent with their findings during the initial investigation. A speeding driver from Brazil was apprehended by a Sumter County Sheriff's deputy. Gus, I can't say his name will be in the picture. 22 of Orlando was driving a vehicle at 9.46 p.m. Wednesday near the intersection of U.S. 301 and County Road 204 in Wildwood when he was caught on radar traveling 60 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone, according to the arrest report. During a traffic stop, Gus handed a deputy a Brazilian driver's license. He said he did not have a driver's license issued in the United States. He claimed he used to have a Florida license, but it was not renewed. He also claimed he was in the process of buying the vehicle he was driving. Come on now. The deputy confirmed that Gus's license had not been renewed due to sanctions. He was arrested on a charge of driving while license suspended and issued a written warning for speeding. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $150 bond. UF Health, the village's hospital, is now named UF Health Spanish Plains Hospital. The new name reflects UF Health's continued commitment to providing world-class, leading-edge patient care to the village's community and signals our continued dedication to serving residents throughout the region, better aligning with the hospital's specific location, said Heather Bentley Long, Chief Executive Officer of UF Health Central Florida. Hey, Heather, you never did respond back to my emails that I sent you. Are you scared? She knows I'm going to ask the difficult questions. I'm going to record it. She said UF Health, in conjunction with the village's leadership, chose the name Spanish Plains to pay tribute to the vibrant business and commercial district of Spanish Plains. The long-standing designation for the area of the village is immediately north of the community's original downtown area, Spanish Springs. The new name represents the village's deep-rooted Spanish theme, which can be found throughout the area's architecture as well as in the names of buildings, streets, and bodies of water. This new UF Health Spanish Plains hospital name not only cements our presence within the existing business and commercial districts of Spanish Plains, but reinforces our commitment and investment in the villages as we continue to add new technology and clinical areas of focus to the hospital, Long said. Since purchasing the hospital, formerly the village's regional hospital, in 2020, UF Health has invested more than $34.7 million in new technology and enhanced services to bolster patient care and improve the health and well-being of residents of the villages and surrounding communities. Founder of the villages, Harold Schwartz, lobbied hard for the hospital in the early days of Florida's friendliest hometown. He famously placed a billboard prominently on U.S. Highway 27 and 441 one promising to make the hospital a reality and he did the only problem i got with you of health villages hospital and i've told this story before i went there once for some heart tests and they treated me fine the lady at the admissions desk was a little grumpy that day don't know why but she never said anything bad to me but i could just tell she was in a bad mood that's all uh, but everything else there was fine doctors was fine they gave me the results immediately after the test i went home that's the only time i've been there but i've heard complaints especially during the snowbird season from at least a hundred people that had to go to the emergency room that seems to be where the problem is the emergency room now i don't work at a hospital never have and i know the emergency room sometimes can be a very very difficult place to work everybody thinks that their emergency is more serious than the next guy and i know they take you by priority so that could be 
the problem and people don't understand. I don't know. Maybe there's not enough help. Maybe COVID got involved in it. I don't know that either. But uh, it seems like the emergency room is where I hear all the complaints. A villager is headed to prison after stealing a golf cart from a church parking lot. Mark Muldoon, 60, was sentenced to three years in state prison this week after pleading no contest to a charge of theft of a motor vehicle in Sumter County. Muldoon is accused of stealing a silver 2019 Onward Club Car golf cart on the evening of September 16th at Fairway Christian Church on County Road 466. It had been driven there by a member of the church who was attending worship service. Muldoon is a Chicago native who lives at the Escondido Villas, has a long troubled history here in Florida's friendliest hometown. This past 2023, Muldoon was armed with a broom when he allegedly caused a laceration to a man's head. In 2021, Muldoon was arrested after headbutting a man in a dispute over a cell phone. In 2020, Muldoon was arrested after paying an unwanted visit to Spanish Springs Town Square. I believe he's been banned from there for like for life. Muldoon had been banned from the square in 2015 that year. He was sentenced to 30 days in jail after a woman complained to a police officer that he had been grabbing at women's arms and asking them to dance while at the square. Muldoon has had numerous other arrests, most of them stemming from intoxicated behavior. Well, three years in jail will take care of that problem. A speeding driver from Guatemala was arrested on State Road 44. To follow Banixi Lopez, we're just going to call him Tio, of Opopka. That's another one of them little towns you're going to hear about once in a while. Opopka was driving a white Chevrolet Silverado pickup at about 6 p.m. Wednesday on State Road 44 at County Road 243 in Wildwood when he was caught on radar traveling 72 miles per hour in a 60 mile per hour zone, according to the arrest report of Sumter County Sheriff's Office. During the traffic stop, Tio handed the officer a Guatemalan identification card. He said he lives in Opopka and has been in the United States for 22 years. Maybe. Doubtful. Maybe. A record check showed he has never obtained a driver's license in the United States. In 22 years, you never got a driver's license. You're going to have to explain that one to me. He was arrested on a charge of driving without a license. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $150 bond. Residents are frustrated after four grandchildren moved into a home in the villages and nothing has been done to remedy the situation. The uncomfortability is occurring in the village of Linden, located south of State Road 44. The mother of the children is reportedly living in the home with her parents and during the school year, the children were said to be attending Villages Elementary of Lady Lake. It's summer and they are all there enjoying the pool and the village's lifestyle. Neighbors approached the villages, but other than a few letters, no action has been taken and the children continue to reside in the home. They have called and written the offending neighbor, but the neighbor blatantly ignores them. The neighbor even admitted to the developer the kids have been there for over a year, and he knows it is wrong and against the rules, said Jim Susala of the village of Linden. He quoted a specific deed restriction that applies to this situation. To add insult to injury, Susala and his neighbors have been told they could take it upon themselves to file a lawsuit and try to get the children out of the home. But that doesn't seem reasonable. It should definitely not be the responsibility of the neighbors to enforce something that the villages put in place. I agree the villages should enforce internal deed restrictions as aggressively as they enforce external deed restrictions. Perhaps the villagers need to get together and file a lawsuit against a developer and their representatives for failure to uphold these deed restrictions, he said. I mentioned that a couple years ago. In recent months, some community development districts have flirted with the idea of taking over the responsibility of enforcement of internal deed restrictions. Communication from the developer to the district government has indicated the developer is ready to hand off that responsibility to the CDDs. However, many CDD supervisors have indicated taking over enforcement of internal deed restrictions, such as children in a home or running a business out of a home, would be opening a big, potential, costly can of worms. Those supervisors argue their CDDs already have their hands full with enforcement of external deed restrictions. On the other hand, some supervisors are as frustrated at the village of Linden residents who are dealing with the four grandchildren in the home. The officials feel they owe it to the residents to try and step in and take action to enforce the deed restrictions. You know, these kind of things always makes us look like we're just a bunch of old ogres here that hate kids, and that's not true. We raised our kids. 
A lot of us help raise our grandkids. We retired. We want to live in peace and quiet. We welcome the children to come down and visit. We just want to be left in a retirement community because that's what this is supposed to be. Okay, I always like both sides of the story. You guys know that. And when I can give it to you, I will. Here is the answer from the grandparent who has these four children living in his home. A villager is offering an explanation as to the reason his grandchildren were living with him here in Florida's friendliest hometown. Residents of the village of Linden are reportedly frustrated that their children have been living with their grandparents. While the neighbors have been unhappy with that family's living arrangement, they have been equally unhappy with the developer's apparent ambivalence about the enforcement of deed restrictions against children in their home. John Duff contacted villagesnews.com and identified himself as the subject of the article, although he previously had not been identified in the villagesnews.com. He blasted the original news story as full of misleading and inaccurate information. He wanted a chance to explain what was happening. Our daughter and her children started living in our home in mid-March of this year due to an order from the Florida Department of Child and Family Services. He alleged that his daughter had been physically assaulted by her husband in the children's presence. We were advised by the DCFS that the children would have to live with us or they would be placed in foster care and not necessarily together. I don't know of any grandparent that would allow that, Duff said. He said the children stayed at his home for their safety and moved out at the end of May. They lived in our residence for two months, not a year, that was reported. We immediately contacted the village's developer and advised them of the situation. We were advised that it was permissible to have the children reside in our residence due to the unfortunate circumstances. They also advised that the children can be here anytime. However, they are not allowed to reside here permanently. We were in constant contact with the villages, Duff said. Duff added that he has lived in the villages for 18 years. As far as being in Florida's friendliest hometown, I would have to agree years ago, but not anymore. Unfortunately, this street in the village of Linden is the most unfriendly street I have ever lived on. We decided to list our house and leave the villages. Well, that's always your choice. But 18 years of living here, Mr. Duff, the only thing I got to say, I'm not going to argue about all the statistics here because I don't know all the facts. You do. After 18 years, though, you know what the rules are. And child services does not enforce our district rules. But I've always said, if you've got a, a problem with any of our rules or anything around us, ask before you buy the house, who enforces that rule? Because I'm here to tell you, very few of our rules are actually actively enforced. They do a lot of good talking, but nothing gets done. A man from Nicaragua was found obstructing a roadway in a vehicle with North Carolina license plates. Jose Eduardo Wilson Keith, 30, was at the wheel of a red Toyota Highlander at 1219 Monday when the vehicle was spotted sitting in the middle of the roadway with all lights off, obstructing the roadway in Bushnell. Bushnell is going to be another one of them towns you're going to hear more and more about as we start encroaching on that area. Wilson Keith handed his Nicaraguan driver's license to the deputy who was investigating the situation. Wilson Keith admitted he has been in the United States for two years but has not obtained a driver's license. He was taken into custody on a charge of driving without a license and booked at the Sumter County Detention Center. He was released after posting a $150 bond. An unlicensed driver from Mexico was yelled after a traffic infraction in the villages. Ed, 25, from Leesburg, at about 8 p.m. Monday, was driving a black 2011 Ford Expedition on State Road 44 at Buena Vista Boulevard when a traffic stop was initiated because the vehicle had an inoperative driver's side headlamp, according to the arrest report of Sumter County Sheriff's Office. During the traffic stop, Salinas handed the deputy a Mexican passport and a Mexican identification card. He admitted he has been living in the United States for six years and never obtained a driver's license. You'll have to explain that to me. He was arrested on a charge of driving without a license and issued a written warning for the equipment violation. He was booked at the Sumter County Detention Center and released after posting a $500 bond. 
A sinkhole shut down traffic on a business thoroughfare in the villages. The sinkhole opened up at about 3 p.m. Saturday on Canal Street and Golden Grove Drive. The location is near the Sable Chase Pool and Postal Facility. The village's public safety department responded to the scene and found a three-foot opening on the roadway. Upon closer inspection, firefighters found that the depression was about 15 feet deep, 25 to 30 feet in circumference. District, Property Management, and Jacobs also responded to the scene. It has not been determined how long that section of Canal Street will remain closed. Angry Lake Panasovsky residents fighting to save their rural way of life. And so it starts. Lake Panasovsky residents again confronted Sumter County Commission's Tuesday night to oppose a project to replace septic tanks with the centralized sewer system in their community. Besides concerns about a cost estimated to be as high as $40,000 per home, they fear the sewers could bring an onslaught of development to their rural communities. And that's a good guess. Replacing septic tanks is viewed as a step toward cleaning up the weed-infested lake and working to restore its water quality. County Administrator Bradley Arnold said the county has no further role in the project, which is under control of the Florida Government Utility Authority, a government agency working with the Lake Panasovsky Water Association. The commissioners, Orrin Miller, said the county should be involved because of residents' concerns over the potential cost. If this happens, there is a danger of people losing their homes, he said. I don't think FGUA cares about these people one iota. Commissioner Jeffrey Bogue, who chaired the meeting in the absence of County Chairman Craig Estep, suggested commissioners discuss the issue at a workshop. In other words, they want to go hide. Residents may not need to remove their septic tanks at an additional cost of $5,000 to $10,000, said Commissioner Andrew Billardello. When a community adopted a centralized sewer system where Billardello lived, he said homeowners were allowed to leave their septic tanks in place after connecting to the sewers. Mm-hmm. Arnold said the county has no plans to provide a project funding. Mm-hmm. But the wastewater treatment plant would be built on land the county received from the state. He said Lake Penascovsky's higher poverty level makes it more likely that grants can be found to help fund the project. The county's administrator said the centralized sewer system could bring development to Lake Penasovsky. He said a decision by Coleman not to install a sewer system shrunk its urban service area and ensures that it will remain a small city. Community resident Bill Jenkins said he moved to the community 21 years ago because he likes to bass fish. He said he fears a centralized sewer system will spur development and harm the rural environment and it will this is old florida a beautiful place he said i'm worried about change i don't think this is the way to go dorothy bostick said he bought a mobile home with a new septic system after her husband died and she now lives on a limited income what i have now is a little bit of emergency money and money for my cremation she said if i have to pay for this you might as well throw me in the river <laughs> sorry i don't mean to laugh <laughs> that is funny Lake Panasovsky often is treated worse than other areas in the county, said Levi Norris. It seems like Lake Pan is a stepchild more than anything, he said. Debbie Arcus said residents may have difficulty selling their homes if they are saddled with large assessments for a sewer system. Harry Taylor predicted that unforeseen conditions would drive up the system's cost more than people realize. Let me tell you a real quick story. I lived in a rural part of Indiana, and then when they started doing this development that you're seeing here, but it wasn't near this big they came out to our neck of the woods knocked on everybody's door and said hey what do you think about hooking into a regular sewer system per the town of at that time pendleton or you know uh, what was it madison county i said i don't want it we had, we had a new sewer system we had a new house no problem we were fine well they came back later and says you know if if what we can do is run it up to your house and then you can hire whoever you want to to hook into that sewer and then you can negotiate your own cost to hook it up to the sewer i said okay that's fine you do what you want and they did they run it up to the house and I walked away six months later i wasn't hooked up to it then i received me and my other neighbors a court order saying you will hook up by such and such date and provide the court proof 
proof that you hooked up. I said, I'm not doing it. I don't want to hook up to that. I'm fine. I got no problems here. I'm not doing it. Well, then the court sent somebody out to the house. They crawled under the house, went all the way back to my septic tank. They hooked me up to the sewer line out front. And then I'll tell you what they'd done with my septic tank in the back. I dug down to the lid part of it, opened it up, and they filled it up with gravel. So it couldn't be used anymore. I had no say so. And then the bill came every month just like our bond payment i had to pay so much a month until that thing is paid for and then i sold the house so i'm just letting you guys know if any of you are up lake Penascovsky, listen i i love the country life i love the just leave people alone if they're not bothering nobody but i can tell you if anything here is like it was there the day may come if they want to put it in there you're going to get a court order and they're going to tell you you got to do this or else that's what it boils down to sorry to say about a couple letters to the editor to the editor i don't think the community development districts should take over the internal deed restrictions the developer needs to be held accountable they seem to want all the benefits but not the responsibility they should be taken to court question who is they and maybe some bad publicity would help this is a retirement community and that's one of the reasons people buy here the developer upholds rules that affects his pockets but seems not to care about the residents once they buy here what other problems will they pawn off just my opinion from ann colhane from the village of pentacamp and i'm not going to comment to the editor A developer should stop having any control over any deed restrictions and turn everything over to the residents and their elected representatives in the CDDs. He's way too busy building homes and making money and doesn't really care once he sold a house. We all sign a legal document saying we agreed to do when we buy a home and it's up to the CDDs to enforce those and stop dragging out the enforcement of the deed restrictions. Breaking a rule should have a consequence and maybe it should be a consequence that doesn't take forever to happen. And that's sent in by Peter Capo from the village of Point Siena. And once again, I can't comment. I, I kind of agree with both of them. Hey, okay, I believe that's going to be the news for this week. I hope you guys enjoy it. There were some different things in there I tried this week to uh, get your opinions about. Hey, listen, anytime I make a comment on the news, it's always just my opinion or it's something that I definitely know, and that's not a lot. But uh, it's just my opinion. I'm entitled to that. You're entitled to yours. So if you disagree with anything that I've said or my opinion about anything, hey, leave it in the comments below. That's okay. I don't mind. If I could ask just one favor of all of you, tell your friends about my channel and uh, share these videos there's a share button below every video on youtube and put it on your social media whatever it may be and it helps the channel grow i also want to thank you patreons you're the lifeblood of the news and i truly mean that without you guys this would be a tough thing for me to do uh, but i do appreciate it uh, my patreon members they give me their suggestions and their thoughts on uh, our discord channel And I do take them to heart, and I do try to take care of my patrons the best that I can. If you're not a Patreon member, I implore you to go to the Patreon. And you can become a member for as little as $2 a month, and then it goes from up from there. And you'll get uh, an invitation to our private members-only Discord page. And that's where you'll see everybody. And if you need more villages in your life, or you'd like to get some opinions from other people about certain things in the villages or around the villages, Discord is where you need to be. That's where everybody's at. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed it. Come back next week and watch it. See you on Wednesday on Port Sutton. Maybe. Scooter's here. I'm not going to guarantee a port setting because scooters here be safe take care be well be aware see you on the other side and don't leave that key in the golf cart this week's news is brought to you by my patreon and youtube members thanks guys you're the best